Adhesives Part 2 Old and New Glues A sample of white PVA wood glue next to its container put to PVA polyvinyl acetate is a typical household adhesive commonly used for sticking wood together. Here is a small sample that is erected out next to its container. According to historians and uh, <coughs> archaeologists, adages have been used for thousands of years, probably since Stone Age cave dwellers first applied between a tarry substance substance used to surface highways to stick flint axle heads to the tops of their wooden hunting spears. In ancient times, people made their glues from whatever they found in the world around them, such as sugar, fish skin, and animal products boiled in water. This is how the PVA looks. We still use some of these natural adhesives today, though we are much more likely to use artificial adhesives made in a chemical plant. It's obvious modern glues are chemical products from the horrible name they have, polyvinyl acetate, Phenol formulated or pH, ethylene vinyl acetate or EVA, cyanocrylate or superglue, to name just four. Many modern adhesives are called synthetic resins for no good reason other than that resin, a gluey substance found in pine trees and other plants, was one of the first widely used adhesives. Knowing what some, something is called is a fairy cry from knowing how it works. That was a lesson the Nobel Prize winning American physicist Richard Penham in 1980 to 1988 often used to teach. So let's forget all about adhesives, acetates, and acrylates and try to figure out why one thing will stick to another. How forces make things stick? If you want a short answer, the word is forces. Because of forces, the things are stuck together. People stick to us surface even though the planet is rotating at high speed and even there is no glue on the soles of our feet. The reason is simple that gravity bonds us to the planet with enough force to stop us whizzing off into space. But gravity is not enough to keep us permanently in place. If we supply bigger forces, for example, by using our muscles to move our legs and jump in the air, we can unstick ourselves and go somewhere else. Life on Earth is a bit like being a giant living posted node only with legs. So you don't always need a blob of adhesive to stick things together. That much is bindingly obvious whenever it rains on your window. Gravity tries to pull the water down to the bottom of the glass and sooner or later it usually wins, but two interesting things try to stop it. The first, water molecules, two atoms of hydrogen, and one atom of oxygen joined 
naturally stick to one another. So they clump together in a big droplet on the window. These two types of forces pull upward on the bottom drop, helping it to resist the downward pull of its own weight. Next time it rains, watch how water behaves. See how the rain naturally comes into droplets because of cohesion, which remain on the glass because of adhesion. The drops fall down the window only when they are too heavy for the adhesive forces to keep them in the place when the gravitational force pulling them down is greater than the adhesive force holding them up. Notice how they run down the window in distinct tracks with droplet falling existing watery parts. That is because the water droplet that are falling are trying harder to stick to the water that is already there rather than to the glass cohesion at work again. Why does the rain form those stacky channels? Because as drops fall down the grass, cohesive forces tear some of the water molecules away from passing drops, leaving behind droplets that are small enough to stick to grass. This is adhesion again. Adhesive and cohesive forces in glues. Diagrams showing how adhesive and cohesive forces work in glues. This is how the cozy forces bring them together, form a droplet, and this drop sticks to the leaves only when the weight is uh, unbearable, it falls down. So, here is another figure where there are three substrates A, C, B. A stands for adhesive forces. B stands for, C stands for the cohesive forces and B stands for the substrate on which the glue is applied. R toward, adhesive and cohesive forces both play a part in sticking things together. What does all this have to do with adhesives? Adhesive and cohesive forces are also at work in glues. Let's say you want to stick together two bits of wood A and B with the adhesive called C. You need three different forces here. Adhesive force to hold A to C, adhesive forces to stick C to B, and cohesive forces to hold C together as well. The first two are pretty obvious. The glue has to stick to each of the material you want to hold together, but the glue also has to stick to itself. If that is not obvious, think about sticking a training shoe to the ceiling. The glue clearly must stick both to the training shoe and to the ceiling. But if the glue itself is weak, it does not matter how well it sticks to the shoe or the ceiling because it will simply break apart in the middle, leaving the layer of glue behind on both surfaces. That is a failure cause when the adhesive forces are greater than the cohesive one and the cohesive forces are not big enough to overcome the pull gravity. Jam sandwiches may not be the first thing to spring to your mind when you think about adhesives, but the jam is working as a kind of glue. It is made of sugar and water. A classic adhesive recipe used since ancient times 
if you use fairly strong bread, you can pick up a jam sandwich by just one corner of one slice and the whole thing will stay together in your hands thanks to jammy glue. Jam has high cohesive forces. That is why jam can be hard to dig out of the jam bottle with your knife. But its adhesive forces are high too. If you butter two pieces of bread and cover one slice with jam, then close the sandwich, then peel it apart, you'll find there's some jam left on both surfaces. As you pull apart the sandwich, you'll find the jam breaking itself in two lots of little strands. That is because the adhesive forces are stronger than the cohesive ones. Your jam sandwich fails due to a failure of cohesion. Marmite as a glue food. When you put spread on a single slice of bread, make a sandwich, then peel the sandwich apart, you will find there is some spread on both sides. This groundbreaking scientific experiment demonstrates a catastrophic cohesive failure of the spread as a glue. Unlike most experiments, it also tastes good. This illustrates another important point about glue. Adhesive is a relative term. Whether something glues if effectively or not depends on the size of the forces it must hold against. You can easily glue a glass of water to a caster if the bottom of the glass is wet and the coaster is light. That is because the cohesive and adhesive forces involved holding the coaster to the glass are greater than the coaster's own weight. But you cannot use water to glue a coaster to a block of wood or a lump of metal. You cannot glue yourselves to the ceiling with water. Though an insect might be able to manage it. Now we know that adhesives work through adhesion and cohesive forces. We need to understand a bit more about how those forces themselves work. Let us start with cohesive forces. As you can discover in our main article about the magic of water, water molecules join together with one another because they are not symmetrical. One end has a slight positive charge and the other end has a slight negative charge and the positive and negative ends of different molecules snap together like opposite ends of magnet. That is a kind of electrical or electrostatic bonding. In metals, the atoms are strongly held together in a rigid crystal structure called a lattice that is a bit like scaffolding or a clamping frame with atoms at the joints and invisible bars holding them together. You can easily separate one piece of water from another by lifting some out of a spoon. The cohesive forces are quite weak. But you cannot easily separate one bit of iron from another with a spoon or anything else because the cohesive forces are incredibly strong. How do cohesive forces work? This is how they work. Water and iron are both pretty useless as glues, but the quite but for quite different reasons. Water could be an excellent glue because it sticks quite well to another substances such as glass, but its cohesive forces are incredibly weak. You can stick paper to the wall by wetting it first, but 
you can usually peel it off quite easily too. When you peel, you are breaking the weak cohesive forces that hold one molecule to another. Iron is no good as a glue because it's too preoccupied with sticking to itself to stick to another end. All its forces are occupied internally, fixing one iron item to another in a strong cohesive structure. There is nothing it can use to attach itself to another object. Its adhesive forces are virtually non-existent. Cello tip sticky tip dispenser. Sticky tape, also called a scotch tape or cello tape, after two well known brands, is simply a pressure sensitive adhesive on a convenient transparent film batting. Now, for the real question, what makes a gluey substance stick to something else? You may be surprised to hear that there is no single simple answer, but that is not so surprising if you consider how many different types of glue there are and how many different ways in which we can use them for each different glue and each different surface we use it on scientists think a combination of different factors are at work holding the two together but the plain truth is no one exactly no one exactly what is going on every case four theories of how things stick through absorption chemi absorption mechanical attachment and diffusion artwork four theories of how things can stick clockwise from top absorption is a surface sticking effect caused by small attractive forces between the adhesive yellow and the substance that is sticking red and blue. How adhesive forces work? One of the main factors is called as absorption. When you spread adhesive, it wets the surface you apply it to. Lots of very weak electrostatic forces between the glue molecules and the molecules of the surface called Van der Waal forces for the physicians Van der Waal 1837-1923 who discovered them hold the two things together. For adhesives to work well like this, they had to spread thinly and wet the surface very well. There is no actual chemical bond between the glue and the surface. It's sticking to just a huge number of tiny article forces, attractive forces. The glue molecules stick to the surface molecule like millions of microscopic magnets. In some cases, adhesives can make much stronger chemical bond with the material they touch. For example, if you use certain glues on certain plastic, the glue and the plastic actually merge together to form a very strong chemical bond, they effectively form a new chemical compound at the joint. That process is called chemiabsorption. Absorption and chemiabsorption are chemical connections between the glue and the surface. Glues can also form physical mechanical bonds with the surface they are sticking to. Suppose the surface is porous, full of holes. Here on the right hand side, we'll find a photograph showing the different adhesion principles because of which the adhesive sticks. Theory number one is absorption, number two is KB absorption, number three is mechanical, and number four is diffusion. The glue can seep into those holes and grip through them like a clamber's fingers grabbing holes in a rock face. That is called the mechanical theory of adhesives. Another theory how glues work suggests the adhesive can diffuse into the surface and vice versa. With molecules 
sweeping over at the joint and mingling together. This is called the diffusion theory. How do post-it notes work? How micro capsules of adhesive work or help a post-it note to stick repeatedly? Post-it notes attach themselves with help of with help from lots of micro capsules, tiny microscopic bubbles of adhesive on the reverse, which are much larger than the glue particles on the conventional sticky tape. So what about the little post-it note stuck to your wall? How does that work? Look at the back of the sticky note using an electronic microscope and you will see not a continuous film of adhesive but lots of microscopic glue bubbles known as macro capsules which are about 100, 10 to 100 times bigger and much weaker than the glue particles you had find rising around on normal sticky tape. When you push a post-it onto a table, some of these relatively large sticky capsules clinch to the surface provided just enough adhesion force, adhesive force to hold the weight of paper in the little note. Every time you attach and peel off the note, dust and dirt attach to the adhesive capsule so they progressively lose their stickiness. But since there are so many capsules of all different sizes, a post-it note does go on sticking for quite a while. Adhesives are designed to work when they leave <coughs> the tube and not before. Different adhesives achieve this in different ways. Some are dissolved in chemicals called solvents that keep them stable and non-sticky in the tube. When you squeeze them out, the solvents quickly evaporate in the air or get absorbed by the surfaces you are sticking to, freeing the adhesive themselves to do their job. Plastic modeling glue works like this. It contains molecules of polystyrene in an acetone solvent. When you squeeze the tube, the glue spurts out and you can usually smell the very strong acetone as it evaporates. Once it's gone, the polystyrene molecules lock together to make strong chemical bond. This is it. There are two pictures. This is how you can apply and use it. Glue does not smell when it's dry because all the solvent has vanished into the air. Some glues such as synthetic epoxy resins have to be mixed together before they work. <clears throat> they come in two different tubes. One contains the synthetic resin and the other contains a chemical that makes the resin harder. The two chemicals are useless by themselves but mix form a tough and permanent adhesive. A typical stick adhesive, a typical spray aerosol adhesive, you just saw a photograph of a spraying on paper. How, do, how does a gecko stick to the ceiling? Cotton green gecko with feet spread out and sticking to a wall. Gecko have been baffling people for over 2000 years, ever since one of the very first, very first scientists, Aristotle, wondered why they can walk upside down on a ceiling. Now, Gecko has mass, so it also has weight. Gravity pulls it 
donuts like anything else. If you tried walking on ceiling, you had very quickly find yourself on the floor. So how does Gitko defy one of the most basic laws of physics? If a force acts on an object, but the object does not move, there must be another force acting in the opposite direction. In other words, two forces must be exactly balancing one another. Since the gecko does not fall, there must be another force acting upwards that stops gravity from pulling it down. Now, a gecko has mass. Maybe the gecko has suction pads on its feet. Scientists thought this might be the explanation, so they put a gecko in a tank and sucked all the air out of it. Strangely enough, the gecko still managed to walk on the ceiling. For us, the gecko's body squeezes out glue. That was another theory the scientists tested, but when they examined a tank that gecko had been climbing around it, around it, they found no evidence of any sticky stuff. Could static electricity explain it? Electricity can certainly stick things together. If you rub a balloon on a woolen jumper, the balloon will eventually stick to you. Rubbing makes static electricity build up on the balloon's surface. This creates an electrical force between the rubber and your jumper that makes the balloon stick. Forces like this are called as electrostatic because they use static, non-moving electricity. Does static electricity make echo stick? Moisture tends to make ele static electricity disappear. Static electricity will flow away through the water and vanish. But if you put a gecko in a humid tank or one of the moist ceiling, it can still do the upside down trick. So static electricity does not quite explain what is happening either. So what is the trick? Each one of the gecko feet is covered in millions of tiny hairs called setae. Looking under a powerful electronic microscope, scientists found each hair is also a bit like brush with hundreds of bristles called spatule at its end. When the gecko walls on the ceiling of a tank, hundreds of millions of bristles are brushing against the glass. Each gecko bristle is made of organic, that is carbon-based molecule, while the glass is made up of molecules of different substrate, substance like silicon dioxide. When the gecko moves, its hairs over the glass and the organic molecules brush part the silicon dioxide molecules. When the two types of molecules are extremely close together, tiny <clears throat> electrostatic forces, vendor or forces, namely magically appear between them. Each of the organic molecules stick to a silicon dioxide molecule like a balloon sticks to your jumper. Every single bristle provides a microscopic upward force that helps to stick the gecko to the ceiling. With hundreds of billions of bristles all working as a team, there is more than enough sticking force to balance the gecko's weight. The glue clearly must stick both to the training shoe and to the ceiling. But if the glue is weak, it does not matter how well it sticks.
the use of adhesives offer many advantages over bending techniques such as sieving mechanical fastening like nut bolting thermal bonding like welding advantages bind ability to bind different materials together join distribute stress more effectively across the joint cost cost effectiveness of an easily mechanized process aesthetic improvement in the aesthetic design and flexible increased design flexibility disadvantages of adhesive decrease stability at high temperature relative weakness in bonding large objects with a small bonding surface area greater difficulty in separating objects during testing adhesives are typically organized by the method of adhesion these are then organized into reactive and non reactive adhesives which refer to whether the adhesive chemically reacts in order to harden alternatively they can be organized by whether the raw stock is of natural or synthetic origin or by their starting physical phase adhesives may be found naturally or produced synthetically the earliest human use of adhesive like substances was approximately 200000 years ago when nedid when netherlands produced tar from the dry distillation of breech bark for use in binding stone tools to wooden handles the first reference of adhesive in literature first appeared in approximately 2000 bc the greeks and romans made great contributions to the development of adhesive in europe glue was not widely used until a period 80 1500 to 1700 from then until the 1900s increases in adhesive use and discovery were relatively gradual only since the last century has the development of synthetic adhesives accelerated rapidly and innovations in the field continued to the present history a reconstruction of its x which use which as an adhesive the earliest use of adhesive was discovered in central italy when two stone flakes partially covered with bridge bark dug and a third uncovered stone from the middle middle era that is 200000 years ago were found this is thought to be the oldest discovered human use of tar helped stones a bridge bark dark adhesive is simple one component adhesive all the stick all the sticky in the plant based adhesives are brittle and vulnerable to environmental conditions the first use of compound adhesives was discovered in sibudu south africa from 81 to 500 the greeks and romans made great contributions to the development of adhesive wood veneering and other developments the production of animal and fish glues refined and other materials utilized
egg based paste were used to bond gold leaves incorporated various natural ingredients such as blood bone hide milk cheese vegetables and grains the greeks began the use of slick lime as mortar while the romans furthered mortar development by mixing lime with volcanic ash and sand this material known as pozzolanic cement was used in the construction of the roman colosseum and pantheon the romans were also the first people known to have used tar and beeswax as chalk and sealant between the wooden planks of their boats and ships beeswax here how it looks like modern slick lime factory in ukraine in central asia the rise of mongolon in approximately 80000 can be partially attributed to the good range of power of the boats of Genghis Khan's hordes these boats were constructed with laminating leopard wood and wool horn bonded by an unknown adhesive liquid animal glue in 1750 the first british glue patent was issued for fish glue the following decades of the next century witnessed the manufacture of casein glue in german and swiss factories in 1876 the first us patent number 183024 was issued to ross brothers to produce casein glue casein glue preparation the first us postage stamps used starch based adhesive when issued in 1840 the first us patent number 61991 on dextrin a starch derivative adhesive was issued in 1867 You can contact me on my WhatsApp, on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on Skype, or you can visit my YouTube channel. You can get in touch. Thank you very much. Namaskar.